Good morning, gang. It's 12 o'clock midday on Saturday, the, um, what is it? The 27th of uh, June 2015. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, boys and girls, on this happy, happy Pride Day. Oh, yes, the activists are all out today in London marching around the streets doing the whole gay pride thing. So uh, if you're on the way there, or perhaps... I wonder if there's only anyone watching on on the, on, 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 on the march or anything like that. Or partying this evening somewhere, are you? Well, guess what? I'm off tonight. So here is your opportunity to ask me out somewhere this evening. Anyone? Anyone at all? No one? How disappointing. Oh, well. We're on Periscope as well this morning, boys and girls. The Periscope username is Chris Reard in the UK. Periscope, a free app for iPhones and Android. Simply go to the App Store, download Periscope and add me. Username Chris Reard in the UK and you can join in on your mobile telecommunications devices, OK? Uh, Marge is already here this morning. Good morning, Marge. Nice and early today. Uh, Adam says, just past the black cap. It looks so sad in this pride jar. Hearing your tune put a smile on my face. Well, do you want it again? Would you like the tune again? I've got a different version of my tune. Did you know that? Not a, a lot of people do know that. There is, and you'll understand this, Adam. Oh, you do know that. Okay. You'll understand this, Adam. It is a minor version of it. A minor version of my tune. So uh, here, here, is, here is the original. You'll see what I mean. Listen. <laughs> Okay, and here is the minor version of it. Have you have you heard that version before, Adam? That is the question, my dear. Have you heard that before? USA news, great news. Oh yes, and uh, gay marriage is now all across the U uh, US of A as well. Yeah, we get all the stories here, Marge. The UK gets all the stories. Permanently coming in, permanently coming in on, on on the special BBC News service. Do you know? I, I actually thought about putting a tie on today. Would that would that be better with a tie on on a on a Saturday afternoon? Do you think? Or should I just see you know perhaps another extra open button for you? You know, would that excite anyone at all? Another open button on the old shirt there. <laughs> Good morning to Terry H, who's with us live from Leeds. You're not coming down to London today, Terry? Oh, oh, you like the light version? Naked? No, there's not going to be naked shows here. No naked shows on here, Adam. Honestly, there's plenty of that if you want to watch it on the uh, on the uh, various various channels that we don't we don't talk about here on United Kingdom at all. No, Marge reckons no tie. We'll we're leave it like this then. Well, just leave it like this. Oh, you love that. Have you heard the light? Ver Do you want me to play the whole light version of my little tune? It's about a minute and 50 seconds long. Are you ready? I'm only going to play it. You, you rarely, rarely, I rarely, rarely play this version. OK, here it comes. The light minor version of United Kingdom Talk. Stand by. Here we go. <laughs> A great ending, wait for it.
that. Very rarely heard that version of that, okay? The minor version of United Kingdom Talk. We love it. Now, you're wondering what that tune actually is, aren't you? Do you uh, believe me, I would tell you if I knew, but I don't. Years and years and many, many years ago, I found this. Probably more years than you have been alive on this planet, Terry H. in Leeds. And that is the absolute truth. It really is. Big orchestras. That's what we want, Marge. Big orchestras. Not someone there tapping away on a computer, trying to, you know, uh, uh, recreate an orchestra. We want an actual live orchestra. That's what we need here. Uh, I mean, ever so, I'm so busy at the moment. So unbelievably busy. I don't seem to be time for anything. Uh, for, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fit everything in. But it got, got to the point where I don't seem to be having time to do cleaning and things like that. Indeed, just... Uh, about 10 to 12, I'm in the kitchen, and I looked at the sink. I've got a, a stainless steel sink downstairs. And I thought, oh, my, do you know, it looks so filthy and dirty. So I've got this stuff that you spray on. Um, what's it called? Uh, it gets rid of, um, or what do you call it? Uh, um, what's that stuff you get? Um, it's not scum, scum. Uh, yes, please, Terry. Uh, not scum, scale. Might be scale. Might, might, might be scale. Yes, I think scale. That's it, scale. So I got that clean stuff, you know, that you spray. Oh, Rusty, I know what you mean, dear. I know. I got that spray. And you spray it on via cow. That's it, via cow. And you leave it for two minutes and then you wash it off. Well, I've done that. I'm going to give it a little bit of a rub with my, um, uh, my plastic scourer thing. Uh, to not much avail, I'm afraid. I mean, it looks a bit shinier now. I mean, it was filthy. I haven't cleaned that seat for weeks. Weeks. I, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, I won't lie to you. The, the bathroom one does a bit better. Now, the bathroom has got a ceramic sink in it. And that's quite easy to keep clean. You know, quick spray around with this special bathroom spray stuff. Um... And then a then little bit of a rub and it all comes clean. You turn the tap on and wash it all away again. But the kitchen one's a little bit more difficult. Is it because I've left it for so long? That's probably what it is. You know, what do you think? You've got those, you've got that plate rack as well and you put things on. I mean, I've got a dishwasher, but I don't use it all the time. In fact, I, I, I use a cup three or four times before it goes in the dishwasher. And, uh, oh, I'm not that filth. I know what you're thinking now. No, dear, no. I do wash the cups out with my scourer to get some of it out. I use them about four times, and then I put them through the dishwasher. We can't be using too much electricity, dear. Absolutely not, no. Don't use too much electricity. So I wash them up a few times in the bowl, and then I put them on the, um, uh, on the draining board. And, of course, it drips through. And then that scum, a bit, oh, it's not scum, scale appears again, doesn't it? Is it scale round the side of it? And I've been trying to get it off this morning. Some of it's come off, but not all of it. Do I just need to do it again or leave that spray, spray stuff on, that, that via cow stuff on a little bit longer, perhaps? I don't know. Are you supposed to wear gloves? I didn't wear any gloves. My hand's not itching, but I always wash my hands after I've been touching such things. Is it acid? Is it, is it acid? I don't know. Uh, Marge wants to know, do I wear, oh, it is acid, do I wear an apron when I'm cleaning? No, I don't, no, no. Which is probably the reason that so many of my T-shirts now, I've got little white bits, little white stains, little dots from where I do, uh, <laughs> where I do a bit of, maybe a little bit of bleach has splashed up. Oh, I'm always doing that. And you think to yourself, you know, you pick up this bottle of bleach, don't you? And they think to yourself, oh, you've got to be really careful now, you know, that you don't splash your T-shirt. But the slightest little flick of the cloth, the cloth flicks, doesn't it? It flicks. And there it goes, a little, another white spot on that very expensive T-shirt from Sports Direct. It's so annoying. So I did that this morning, just before I came up here. But even like, I was sitting there watching the telly a little bit last night, just before I went to work. And uh, I was doing a karaoke night last night. And the, um, you know, I'm looking at, oh, that floor needs a hoover. Because I've done that for a few days. I think I might have noticed a dry pea on the floor. Not that sort of pea, you know, a vegetable pea. There seemed to be a dry pea on the floor. God knows how that got. I mean, it must have flicked off the plate when I tried to eat it. It escaped my mouth. Uh, there's not a lot of things that escape my mouth, Terry H. There really isn't, my darling. Um, so that needs doing, the hoovering needs doing. And 
I, I'm just so busy at the moment. Not with, not necessarily with work or or one particular thing. Just everything. Do you know what I mean? Now, as you know, I've been spending an awful lot of time in the garden at the moment. Just, I, I just want lots of flowers and shrubs and things that keep coming up. And me and uh, my friend Ron, we keep going down garden centres and garden centres within DIY places. We, I mean, we love it. We love it. We did very well at Cure, actually. We did very, very well. at. Oh, thank you, Terry. No, there's no match on that one. I did, hang on a minute. Hang on, Terry. How, how can you have had the tune to play? Did you just illegally record it from this programme? Well, I have to report you to the authorities for illegally recording a track off the internet without permission of the user. Is that what's going on here? What is going on? Am I being recorded without permission? Please ask permission if you're going to record me. What a cheek, dear. Good morning, Daniel. Oh, Daniel's here at last from Camberley. Where have you been, dear? We've been very concerned about you, Daniel. We're worried where you are. It's a mystery track, that's what it is. Now, where was I? Oh, I've been thrown off course now. Oh, yes. So, gardening, we, we just love it. We love the time spent through gardening centres. Uh, but we do spend too much. We go in there with the thing, oh, we'll just buy two plants today. And then 100 quid later, we've spent, well, you know, we've got another car full of stuff. It's just shocking. Absolutely shocking how much is coming in. It really is. Um, uh, someone says, is the tune copyright free? I don't know. We can't find it. See if you can find it, Vectis. Vectors Humphreys, as long as you're in a good mood today. You know, I don't want you to be in a bad mood. A lot of people are in a bad mood 24 hours a day. And good morning to Martin. Hello, Martin. Um, can you get a copy for Pulse Talk Radio? Yes, of course you can. Uh, Martin, if you go... Pay attention now, Martin. I hope you like my little shows. I've been doing them about... Well, it's our 10-year anniversary in October. 10 years. I've been sitting here talking absolute... You know, for 10 years. Unbelievable. And we've got a little award that Wendy made. It's downstairs at the moment. I don't want to put it up. I've, I've not finished doing it yet. I've got this little glass crystal thing that, that uh, Wendy made me. United Kingdom Talk. And if you put this on a turntable, she's bought me a coloured turntable as well. I mean, the gifts just keep on coming. Unbelievable. The love that I'm feeling today is, 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 is wonderful. It really is. The love I'm feeling is wonderful. So you put this thing on the turntable and the colours change and it's just beautiful. It's just so beautiful. There might be something for loyal followers at some point, Marge, yes. It turns slowly, so that's really nice. So we're 10 years old. Now, uh, Martin, if you go to, are you ready for this? UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. I shall read that again, slowly, just in case there's anyone who cannot understand my Thames Estuary type accent. UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. That will take you to my main page, right? There is a little section, I think near the top, that says audio versions of my show. Click there and you can download it whenever you want. There's one of these uh, every Saturday, unless I'm away somewhere, OK, which I will be the week after next. I'm away just to, for uh, uh, one day, OK? Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You'll see the uh, audio, audio, uh, uh, audio versions. Click on there, you'll get to another page which will list... All the audio shows going back 10 years. Take what you want. No problem at all. Appreciate you asking, but you didn't need to. Just take what you want, OK? And that'll be fine, my darling. Um, Daniel says, where did you get that dreadful jacket? You're having a laugh, aren't you? Excuse me? You, dreadful jacket? This is Ted Baker. What are you talking about? I beg your pardon. We're not all sitting there on our settees with bags of crisps, you know, watching hideous TV programmes, wearing Adidas tops. Oh, no. We have improved our look. Well, I think I have, anyway. By kind assistant of my dear nephew, Jimmy Butler, and also my friend, Ron. They have tried to improve the way I appear to you in this trans-global television extravaganza. Yes, indeed. Trans-global television extravaganza that is very regular. Very, very regular. Good morning, AD, as well. 
Am I going to court after the show? Why would I be in... What, what, in... Because of the jacket? This is not a hit. Excuse me. This is a lovely jacket. This is the second time I've worn this on this programme. I bet you... Would you like to see the lining, Daniel? It's a lovely lining. And Daniel, have you got Periscope yet for your iPhone or Android phone? You must get that. Because I do several live shows a week on there now. All different times. Look at the lining in this, dear. Look at that. It's beautiful. Sunflowers. Look. Sunflowers and green things and what else is on there? And pink things. Are they, are they butterflies? I think they're butterflies. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful jacket I have ever worn in my entire life. There we are. And I've got a few now. I keep I'm buying things at the moment. Shouldn't really. And I wear this for work, you see. So it's a tax deductible item. Tax deductible item. You know, entertainer has to look good. On stage and things like that. OK, Martin, thank you. Um, so please, 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 dear. I can't wear it inside. It's not, it's not a turn inside out type jacket, Marge. You'll see one thing. Uh, no, it's not a charity shop, dear. Ted Baker. I saw it in the sale. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Next Saturday would be a good day to break in then. Uh, did I say which Saturday? No, you weren't even paying attention, were you? You weren't even paying attention. Thank you. God. Have you got my address, Humphrey? Vectis? Whatever your name is this week? Oh, you get so angry, don't you? So angry. Now, let me see. Uh, I, oh, Daniel says I look great. I don't look great. I'm just, you know, like one of those old turkeys trying to look like a chicken again. Um, <laughs> Terry, please don't pause me. I get very, I'm very upset when people start pausing me. And good morning to Richard Morris. Oh, yes, a fellow landlord, boys and girls. Richard is a slum landlord, boys and girls. Uh, he waits for people to come from various other countries and uh, he puts them in little flats and things like that. There's about, you know, 10 people to a small one bedroom flat, you know, all in bunk beds. That's what Richard does. And the council pay him, pay him vast sums of money uh, to house these people. Funnily enough, I got a letter today from the council, Richard. It's from my local council here. Um, and there's a, they, they, they've set up a meeting. It, landlords, private landlords can go to the meeting. And apparently you can rent, if, you, if, if you're a landlord, you can rent a property to them. And they maintain it and pay you and everything. So I'm going to have a little look at that letter because I'm a, 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 a minor landlord. Not, not one like you, you know. I don't own blocks and blocks of flats. Just a small few select properties. Thank you. Richard says, greetings from a sunny balcony on the Isle of Wight. Oh, is it next Friday? One moment. Oh, it is, isn't it? We're having our pizza next Friday. Or oh, is it the one after? One moment. Is it the 3rd or the 10th that you're coming over? I can't remember now. Richard goes to the Isle of Wight regularly for a holiday. That's a nice little place. If you ever want to visit somewhere for a holiday, the Isle of Wight. There's plenty to do there and it's quiet. And he goes to the same place every year. He's, he's watching from the Isle of Wight today. So we really are international, aren't we? The Isle of Wight. Oh, I love it. Greetings from a sunny balcony on the Isle of Wight watching all the boats go by. You shall have a... Fishy on a little dishy. You should have a fishy when the boat comes in. Dance with your daddy. Dance with your mummy. Dance with your daddy when the boat comes in. Blimey, isn't it funny how you can remember words like that to a song? I haven't heard that song for years. And yet I knew all the words. God, I'm just so multitasking talented. Um, uh, is watching all the boats go by doing the cow's week race. You better get your house clean before I arrive on Friday or I will be checking. Oh, please don't check. Don't check up on me. <laughs> I'll try and get this that sorted for you, OK? Get that little thing done. Now, you can join in, by the way, boys and girls. Uh, we have... Let me just get that on there. We have a... Oh, every time... I think... Can you see that or not? Yes, I think you can. We have... I always have to double check this because sometimes the, um, uh, the the little union flag in the corner of the YouTube videos obscures the writing. But we've got Skype. If you have Skype, OK, you can call in via Skype. 
and we can have a little chat on, on, on the programme. The Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. AD, are you having trouble with your connections today? I notice you're on and off like a, like a yo-yo. OK, once again, the Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Um, if uh, you have a telephone... You can call a local London number. The local London number is 020-8144-3477. 020-8144-3477. OK? And also, there is a email for those of you still using email. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. UK. So all sorts of ways of uh, calling or chatting if you want to. You don't have to. You can just sit there, sit there and enjoy, enjoy my dulcet tones, you know, helping you to while away the Saturday, the beautiful Saturday afternoon that it is at the moment. You know, I shall make sure I'm here for no longer than another 37 minutes. Do not worry. You will still time get time to use a few sun rays today. OK, now I was saying about um, how busy I seem to be at the moment with everything. And uh, I mentioned the garden. Uh, we did quite well at Kew Gardens this week. I, I just told you how much we keep spending in garden centres. And this week, you know, on the way out, guess what they've got at Kew Gardens? On the way out, yes, indeed, they have a plant shop. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you saw the show that I did from uh, Kew Gardens. That's on YouTube. If you want to watch that, just go to YouTube and type in United Kingdom Talk. Friday, the 26th of June, 2015, and you will find that. It's about, I think it's about, it's quite a long one. That's about 15 minutes, that show, I think. Okay? And that's lots of uh, pictures from beautiful, good morning, Mandy, uh, from, from beautiful Kew Gardens. And it really is lovely. Now, um, you could, you, you need a minimum of two days to go around Kew Garden, possibly three all right. If you go to Kew Garden, a minimum of two days, possibly three. You don't need to take any food. They've got a lovely restaurant in there. A little bit pricey, not too bad. Nine pounds for a main course. Yes, Mandy, it's beautiful there. Beautiful. You've got a place to have cups of tea, of course, toilets. There's so much to see there. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. And it's so relaxing. Maybe not a, a thing for young people to do. I don't know. Um, but certainly if you're a little bit older and you like to see flowers and plants, then please go to Kew Gardens. How much is it? How much do you think it is? I think we paid £13. It's not expensive. That's for a whole day out. I think it's £13. I can't re remember the exact uh, figure now. And after you've been in there, pop over the road. Oh, don't worry about bees, Mandy. They don't attack you, darling. We saw loads of bees there. Mandy's a little bit concerned about bees. Bees do not attack you as long as you don't annoy them. You know, if they come round you, right, don't start wafting your hand all over the place. They don't like that, dear. I mean, how would you like it if someone come up to you and they start wafting your hand in your eye like that, you know, wafting? <laughs> you wouldn't like it, would you, Mandy? Come on, be honest with me. Well, the bees don't like it either. So let them just buzz around you and they fly off again. Fine off again. They fly off again. I wasn't stung. I was not stung. You can actually go, and I, I regularly do in my own garden. I've got a lot of flowers and things in there now that I've uh, spent time doing this year. And you can see the bees, and you go right up to them, right up to them, right up to them, right there. You go right up to the bees, and you can watch them like inches away from your nose, and they're not bothered. They're just not bothered at all, so don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, back to Kew Gardens. So when you're finished in there, come out of there, go over the road. There's a little um, old-fashioned English tea shop called the Old oh, Maids of Honour Row, right across from... Ah, oh, no, there's several gates. OK, if you come out of Victoria Gate, that's one of the entrance and exits, then you would go left towards the bridge, and on the other side of the road... Old Maids of Honor Road is an old-fashioned uh, tea shop there. No Daddy Longlegs is here. 
Uh, that was gone in the morning. We had a, a daddy long legs here when I was doing a show uh, this week on Periscope, weren't we? Oh, it was. I don't like daddy long legs. It's daddy long. They're completely harmless, of course, but they're just horrible things and they're flying around you all the time. Um, and with the gardening, because there are no so now so many plants out there and they're all relatively new. A lot of them are new plants out there and a couple of apple trees as well. I spent it seems to be spending an awful lot of time watering everything now. It just goes on and on. Every day, buckets and buckets of blooming water. Now, I've got two water butts, so that that's good. But when they're empty, then I'll get the hose out as well and do it like that. I don't water the garden as a whole, right? Grass. I don't have a sprinkler going on like that. I've got If, if I run out of water in the water butts, um, the way I do it with that is I fill those up and... You know, just just tip the water onto each individual plant. And when you put them in, you make them like slightly below the level. So that when you water it, the water stays in the same place and goes down into the plant. Oh, I've learned all this. I've learned all this. You've got to keep up, dear. You've got to keep up with what's going on. Um, so I don't actually put the sprinkler on the grass. If we go for a long, dry period, the grass goes a little bit uh, brown, maybe even burnt. But one lot of rain, it comes up again. It's a complete and utter waste of time spending vast sums of money on water, watering your lawn. It really is. And when I, when I run out of water in the water butt, I've got the uh, like a trigger spray thing on the end of my hose. I go around, shht, shht. Each plant shh, individually. But it's starting to take a long time. Especially the hanging baskets, dear. The hanging baskets. Every day you've got to water those hanging baskets. And mine are quite high, you know. Now, I'm not saying I live in a bad area. It's quite nice here in Bracknell. But I have had hanging baskets stolen before. You know, by jealous neighbours. Hanging baskets. And you never see them again. Where do they go? I mean, maybe a spaceship comes across and says, oh, I like Chris Reardon's hanging basket and sucks it up into its spaceship and off it goes to another planet. Where are my geraniums ending up? That's what I want to know. It's not on. Them bastard squirrels keep them in digging up my bulbs as well every year. The thing is, they don't even like them. I wouldn't mind so much, but they have one bite out of them and then leave the bulb there and go somewhere else. It's a, li it's a liberty, it really is. It's an absolute liberty. Uh, maybe you could be... Maybe you could make a missing basket poster. That's a very good idea. That's good, like, you know, like they do with cats, don't they? When cats go missing. That's always very worrying. Seems to happen an awful lot where they have Chinese takeaways. Have you noticed that? Cats. Cats strangely go missing. My nephew lost his cat. Yes, he had two beautiful black cats. You know, beautiful black cats, my nephew, because he's not racist, my nephew, so he got black ones. You know, to, 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 to much, you know, so that people know he is not racist. He has black cats, my nephew, even though he is white. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Sweet and sour cat. That's what's going on. Sweet and sour cat. Thank you, Mandy. Awful, dear. Anyway, one of his cats... It's gone. Disappeared months ago. Isn't that funny? And when that one left, the other cat, right, now sleeps in a cupboard outside and won't come in the house. Isn't that strange? There must be something evil lurking in the house. <laughs> oh, Simon says Periscope is quicker than YouTube. And it's probably quicker than you, Simon, as well, isn't it? I reckon you're a little bit slow, aren't you? You're probably a little bit slow. Oh, I've got a... Let's, now that's an... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a, here's a, here's a Skype message that's just come in. Right? Oh, uh, my name is Dr. John Affle. I'm the branch manager of the International Commercial Bank of Kumasi Branch in Ghana. I got your information from an international website. On and on. Uh, I've got three kids. Da, 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 da. He's got a problem. Oh, he's got... I've packaged a financial transaction that will benefit both of us. Thank you. Blocks. <laughs> another one <laughs> so yeah I'm spending an awful lot of time um, uh, watering watering the plants each night at the moment you can't do it during the daytime because it all evaporates again um, and, and I have only been swimming twice this week twice I feel so bad 
I've got a lovely swimming pool I go to just up the road. It's part of the Hilton Hotel. It's not a massive pool, but it's so nice. And I've been to various swimming pools over the years. And this one is the most friendly place. It really is. The staff, um, Trevor is the manager. Uh, the girl who does the cleaning, she's off to have a baby at the moment, so they've got some more in. And uh, it's such a friendly, friendly pace, you know. After you go to these smaller gyms, swimming pools, you, you, you kind of get to know all the people in there. There is one lady in there, I must say, who gets it. And this, she's lovely, she's lovely. But she just talks and talks and talks, honestly. And you're trying to do your lengths. You're trying to do your lengths going up and down. Yes, I remember, Simon. Yes, I do, Adam. You're trying to do your lengths going up and down the pool. And she wants to talk all the time. And, oh, God, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Let's do some messages. Uh, uh, Adam says, do I know someone who asked the, runs the bell? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, is he there as well? Is Simon with us today? Oh, OK. Good morning, Wendy. Oh, a little late, Wendy. 33 minutes late, dear. Where have you been this morning? I cannot believe... Wendy, that you've missed the beginning of the show while we've been talking about you. Shocking. If you're wondering how I know how, how people are joining, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you don't see any of this. There is also this little thing, I'm, you often hear me refer to it, called Periscope. It's quite a new app. And on there, you can see people joining the show. You don't actually see when they're leaving. You know, if I could see that, I'd be straight on the phone. Hello, Wendy. Hello. Yeah, you've just logged off. Can I ask why? Well, come back on there immediately. Look at the cheek. Well, good morning, Wendy. It's lovely to see you, dear. Um, good morning to... Where are we now? Uh, Richard Barron. Good morning, Richard, who's with us late today. Late again. He lost us last week when there was something wrong with the connection and it all went off air, didn't it? At about 22. Well, we're trying to stay with... We're doing our best to stay with you today, Richard. Richard said, you need to play along with those... Uh, Africa scams, it's hilarious. Oh, I've done that. I've done that before, Richard. I do do that, those Africa scams. Or the ones that ring up. What did I have today? Oh, no, this week. So I had someone... Um, was it last week? Either last week or the week before. Another one... Oh, we we hear you've had an accident seven years ago. So I start... Sh I, sh I, was, I wasn't in a good mood. Although I don't ever get angry. I just want to point that out, Simon. <laughs> I just want to point that out. But, um, uh, and I started shouting. And the bloke had the audacity to say to me, don't shout down the phone at me, sir. Well, why did you bloody ring then? Put off, put off. Bang. So I gave him some abuse, put the phone, and then he rang back. Ha, pushed a button, sent it to the answer phone. Don't ring my phone. I'm not interested in talking to you. Thank you. I'm a talker, not a listener. <laughs> Uh, Terry H says, did you know that daddy long legs is are harmful to humans, but their teeth aren't strong enough to pierce our skin? True fact. Is it really? Is it? Uh, Wendy, what do you mean? Just the, the just the usual waffle I've missed. We're doing some groundbreaking stuff on the show today. Groundbreaking, dear. Groundbreaking. Daniel says, always oh, been ill. Have you really? What's, what, what's wrong with you then, Daniel? I'm sorry to hear that. Let me just block this. Um you block this person oh I can also report abuse from this listener abuse reported I don't always report abuse it just depends on the sort of abuse it is if it's some some of the abuse is quite nice I can't lie to you some of it isn't um, and thank you to Richard who just sent a photo of where he is it's beautiful <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> You've taken it the wrong way round, so I've, I've got to go like that. He he overlooks the sea, isn't it lovely? Isle of Wight. I must go to the Isle of Wight. We've got all these beautiful places in England, you know. Um, but what's not very good for a talk show host? What are you going on about now, Simon? So that's it. Um, so a little bit of technology news I've noticed this week. What a fantastic idea. Um, someone has come up with the idea of putting great big video screens on the back of lorries, right, with a camera, so that, I'm, and I'm sure you've come across this before, you know when you want to overtake a lorry, 
but you don't know what's in front of it. Yeah? Well, what they've done is put a massive screen on the back of a lorry and a camera on the front, and that, that screen on the back is constantly on, and you can now see in front of the lorry. What a fantastic idea. Isn't it funny sometimes, you know, all these ideas pop up, don't they? And you kind of wonder why didn't anyone think of that, um, uh, uh, in, in, you know, years ago. But that's a great idea, isn't it? Screens on the back of the lorries. And uh, something else I saw uh, on the television this morning, just before I came up, if I can remember rightly, they've got this personal, I think it was a jet bike or something like that, or a hover bike. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I actually thought about this um, when drones started coming out. You know the little drones that you got? And then you can pick them up now for about 30 quid. Little drones plastic things, you get a remote control and it flies. And of course you can get more expensive ones that you can attach cameras to and fly over and film things and all this business. And I th and, and they're really steady. Not like, um, I don't know if you've ever been on a, a light aircraft. I mean, they're really bouncy. My friend Anthony is, is, is learning to fly one at the moment. He's, he's actually now, it was just, he popped in on Thursday um, to somewhere I was working and told me, he's, they've told him he's now ready for his first solo flight. That is something to be proud of. Very, very something to be proud of. Mandy says, put some cameras on your hanging baskets. I've actually, I keep meaning to do that. Keep meaning to put one of those video cameras uh, out the front. I've got a couple out the back, one round the side, but I haven't got one out the front. You know. Um, sorry, I must, I mustn't, I must try not to always look at your messages because it, it breaks my flow. I've, I've lost it. I've forgotten the game. I forgot. Oh yes, no, it's coming back. It's coming back slowly. It's coming back. It's coming back slowly. No, no, it's not coming back. One minute. What were we talking about? Oh, yes, the drones, the drones. And they are really, really steady. Really steady. Light art aircraft, you're on one of those little light aircrafts, the slightest bit of wind, whoosh, and, and, and you feel it. You feel it. These drones are just like helicopters. Now, I was talking to someone the other day who's, who, who's going on, he's going to Vegas, and I said, well, I want to see the Grand Canyon. I said, right, well, I've done it. The one you've got to do, you've got to spend the money and get the expensive one. It's a light aircraft a helicopter and a boat. And it is the most fantastic day out, the Grand Canyon. Don't just do the helicopter or just the plane. Do all three in the one day and it's a really great day out. And she said to me, th actually, this was the lady in the pool that keeps walking up and down and trying to talk to me. And she said, oh, I don't know about a helicopter. I said, believe me, if you, I don't know if any of you have been on a helicopter, it is smoother than a plane. You do not get bumps or anything like that. There's none of that. It's really, really smooth on a helicopter. You would think you'd be... You know, you'd think it'd be a little bit like that, wouldn't you? Shaking away. Nope. Couldn't be further from the truth. It is much smoother on a helicopter. I would say even then in a great big Boeing plane or an Airbus. It is so smooth. So uh, go on one if you uh, ever have the um, chance of doing that. So I saw them on the tech, and I well, after I seen this, you know, I thought surely if they made like a some sort of hover bike or something, a hover car, rather than just have the one rotor, they should do it like with, with like with the drones, and they have four like fans or whatever they're called, rotors, one in each corner, and that seems to make it really stable. And hey presto, on the telly this morning, they had this hover bike, and indeed, it had the four fans, one in each corner. That's what we need next, a hover bike. So you see, I, I lost out there. That could have been a, a, a copyright, uh, a patent. Could have been a patent for me. I could have made millions out of that. and had my own TV studios and everything where I could come and do this program instead of just a spare bedroom. Huh? But it's not a bad spare bedroom, is it, the way I've done it up? So there's a bit of technology news for you there. Um, wonderful, a hover bike like that. I wonder if you could go over the wall. Could you cross the Thames on a hover bike? I suppose you could. Could you? Like a hovercraft. 
Huh? Have you been on a hovercraft before? Great big old noisy things they are off, off, off to the Isle of Wight. Oh, I love them. I love them. And one other piece of technology news is, and I find this interesting in the Daily Mail this morning, there is a, a weapon designed to shoot down drones from 500 metres away. Four, or is it miles? It says M. Could be miles, could be metres, couldn't it? Four laser beams are focused using a large mirror. Wow. Um, uh, the firm said a 2013 incident where a mini drone crashed at a distance of only two metres from German Chancellor, Chancellor Angela Merkel during an election event shows the need for the weapon. So they just push a button and... And they fire the, um, uh, the, the drone out of the sky. How clever is that? We've designed a system with six lasers and eight to ten is now possible. But four to six is the best number for reasons of size, uh, this company told Defence News. The four lasers, a hundred kilowatt setup, would be mounted on the same type of truck used to ferry the Meads missile defence system. So I suppose that's quite a good thing, isn't it? But of course, you know, as with all this stuff... As with nuclear weapons, what if it gets into the wrong hands? You know, and what amazes me is they 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 bring out all this stuff, right? And yet, small armies like ISIS continue to be able to do what they do. All that firepower, all these things, and yet. Things like ISIS can t are still able to operate. Why is that? So something like this. Are you telling me there's not something up on the satellite at the moment where someone can pinpoint someone? Maybe where I am now, I could. Can it, could uh, uh, you know? Do you not think that someone could pinpoint where I am now? Push a button, a laser would come down, and I'd be destroyed. They must be able to do that now. So why can't they do that? with these um, extremists. And uh, they're not the only ones, are they, ISIS? There's plenty of others all over the world. What's the ones in Africa? I can't remember what they're called now. But they've, they've become friends with ISIS and all that, aren't they? Why can't someone just have these things, these drones floating away, you know, over uh, Syria and places like that? And then they know the people. And wouldn't that be much better to push a button, get rid of them like that, and then, oh, my mirror ball would go. I hope that wouldn't be destroyed. That would be terrible because that's only a few weeks old. They could just push the button and, you know, pinpoint the various people, pst, destroy them and not destroy the beautiful historic buildings around them. Why can't they do that? Oh, I don't know. So there's a little bit of technology news for you there, boys and girls. Now, I've got to read this out to you now. Because uh, especially as this is on the, uh, the, the the kind of summary of the show that we were going to do today. Oh, Terry H says, have you thought about more where you're going away this year? Weren't you going to a country cottage or something with no communications? You've not mentioned it in a while. No, I, I still haven't decided yet. I'm glad you're better now, by the way, Daniel. I still haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. No. I certainly don't want, I don't really want to go on a plane uh, to somewhere or anything like that. Now. London, have you ever worked or lived, or maybe you do live in London? Adam, who's with us this morning, lives in London. Now, what, what do you think? Do, do you like it there? Do you actually like it there? I moved out of London in 1992. Dino, who's with us this morning, lives in London. And when I finish my show today, I'll go outside, sit in my reasonable sized garden maybe I'll go for a walk over to the forest and um, it's just nice no noise not much pollution there probably is pollution out there but we don't really notice it out here it's just beautiful now there are parts of London that are quite nice Richmond uh, Hampstead too for example okay but still they have massive lorries going through the little streets and smell and pollution. And I know this will sound strange to you, but as a person who talks to a lot of people, um, 
not Clapham, Dino. That is a dump. Clapham is a dump. It's, it's, it, uh, uh, it, it's funny, like, exp- Clapham is an expensive place, as indeed is Shoreditch, OK? But in my mind, they are absolute dumps. They really are. It's all very well, you know, you telling me that, oh, yes, uh, you know, I own a house in Clapham and it's worth £700,000. Yeah, but are you happy when you come out of the door? Is it nice? Do you have birds singing? <laughs> you know, and, and they go, oh, oh, there's, there's, there's Clapham Common. I mean, how tiny is that? It's tiny. And let me tell you, when the sun comes out, they're all over there and there's hundreds and thousands of people. Oh, and as someone who, who you know, talks to people all the time, You'll be surprised to know that I don't like massive crowds. Not anymore. I was having this conversation with someone the other day. Drunks singing, Rusty. Yes, at night. I don't like to be in places where there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It does my head in. Pushing and shoving and rude and horrible. You don't feel safe. It's horrible. I would never move back to London again. Crystal Palace, there's another one. Oh, you know, there are some nice parks, but they're not massive. Hyde Park is very nice, but there's so many people there. You know, certainly uh, during the week, if I walk out of my house and walk 10 minutes in that direction, I can be in the middle of a forest. I probably won't even see anyone. Now, if I go up there today, I will see a few people, not masses of them. Sitting there, you know, and, and these people as well, you know, those that go on Clapham Common, they might go over there, take a picnic, and they leave their bloody rubbish on there. And then someone else has to come along a bit because they don't care. They couldn't care less about anyone other than themselves. They leave all the rubbish scattered around tin cans and plastic wrappers. It's disgusting. And the pollution... Taxis and buses chucking out black soot. Not all of them. A lot of them are cleaned up, but still, you can you can smell it. It stinks. Horrible. The River Thames, lovely bit of water going through. It's dirty, dirty. Drunk people at night. You don't feel safe. I mean, even Clapham's supposed to be a you no know, really high class area. Clapham. Have you seen what walks around that high street at night? I don't feel safe going back to my car after a night at work. You've got to have eyes on the back of your head. Awful. Awful. Daniel says... Oh, OK, sorry. I thought you were going to comment then. Um, it, it's just... I mean, why would you ever, ever want to live in, um, in London? And I brought this up because I came across a little article today on a site called ID. I've never seen the site before, but have a listen to this. I'm a Londoner. I'm a Londoner, so much that I pronounce it Landon. <laughs> Landon. I, and why would you pronounce it? I mean, it's a stupid thing to say, isn't it? Landon. And we were together for thirty years. So he stayed in London for thirty years. So I was there until ninety-two. So that's sixty-three, seventy-three, yeah, eighty-three, ninety. Years. So I was there about twenty-nine years in London. A, diff- a couple of different areas. I grew up on a council estate in Lambeth, frequently attended Arsenal games and with my nan studied at three universities in London and almost all of my family and childhood friends still live there. I'd been with London since my birth at St Thomas's Hospital, which is right opposite the lavish palace where the elected honourable members of Parliament run the country. But in 2011 I had to say, and he swears here, Goodbye, London. Our 30-year relationship is over. And for the record, it's not me, it's you. And it is. Let me tell you, it is London. It's not, I don't believe it's me who hates London. It's changed beyond recognition. It really has. When I announced that London and I were parting ways, a lot of my family and mates asked me the same question. When are you planning on coming back? Note, they didn't ask if I was coming back. I'd always reply confidently and without hesitation, never. Then they'd ask me with a truly bewildering uh, expression, but can you really imagine living anywhere else? Well, I am. It's lovely out here. 
For all known Londoners, he says, and those who are unfamiliar with our breed, we are typically so arrogant about the awesomeness of the city that we make Parisians and New Yorkers seem modest. Yeah, you see, you hear that on LBC. You hear the people on LBC. Um, uh, and they are constantly going on how wonderful our city is. You see, I don't, I don't think that at all. I think there are wonderful places within the city. Okay, take, take where I went uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, the uh, London Coliseum, beautiful theatres. There are beautiful theatres. The river is quite nice. There are some lovely restaurants, but it's when you come out the doors, the place is a dump. Concrete everywhere, cars that. Keep moving along, chucking out because they can't park anywhere. Not without handing over a small fortune to NCP car parks. Or maybe getting that ticket on that always overzealous traffic warden. Or getting stuck in endless traffic. Or sitting at lights that are red when there's nothing coming the other way. Why don't they do what they do in America? You know, after a certain time, the lights flash yellow. If it's clear, you just go. Mind you, I don't think some of the stupid people that are driving uh, the cars these days, you know, would they'd see the flashing yellow light and they wouldn't look, they'd just go. So perhaps we do need those red lights. Because maybe the powers that be know that there's going to be people that don't take any notice of the flashing yellow lights. They just assume that it's green and off they blooming go. It's awful, awful. It goes on. Granted, and this is what I'm just saying about it, us having some beautiful places in London. Uh, granted, London has museums, theatres, restaurants, bars and some other stuff that Time Out likes. But so do a lot of places. My new hometown is Coupar in the Kingdom of Fife, Scotland. He's moved to Scotland. That's a long move. And actually something that I have considered on more than one occasion. Scotland is beautiful. Most of it. Of course, you've got Glasgow. Think London. Edinburgh. Mm, not so bad. I've looked at places in Scotland. I'm always on rightmove.com and looking at house prices and rental prices and I'm always totally amazed at the, the the enormous difference between house prices in various parts of the country. There was this one in Scotland I was looking at only the other week. It was £95,000 to buy. They're trying to sell. On one side, you had the sea. On the other side, just open countryside. And from the picture, although pictures can be misleading sometimes, you saw that there wasn't anything else around. And I thought, oh, how beautiful. How beautiful. So where was it? I said, well, I said to you, you could see the sea. It was right at the very top. If you look at a map of Scotland, there's a bit at the top that's kind of flat. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Map of Scotland, and I'll tell you where it is. Uh, bum bum bum, there we are. It was, oh, can I zoom in? Oh, visit, visit, I don't, there we are. Okay, if you was to look at the top, there's a place called Thurso, T H U R S O, right? And then it, it kind of goes across and it's like a little bit flat, right at, and that's where it was, somewhere right at the very top there. It was beautiful, of course. It would be extremely windy there. And Scotland is well known for, for the snow when it comes down there. And in this particular house, I know that you would be completely and totally cut off until that snow uh, disappeared. Brings it, um, you know, what, what if you suddenly become ill and you need an ambulance? Don't suppose it can get to you. That's it. Whereas in London, ambulance can get to you fairly quickly, I would have thought. But what a beautiful place. £95,000. Be a bit windy, wouldn't it, eh? Cool, oh dear, that would be a bit windy up there. Richard says, I'd love to live in London. Check out where I live, Chris. Oh, well, we'll have a look at that. I'll have a look at that. I'll have a look at that. 
And just going back to the other subject, Richard said, fair play what you said about ISIS. In Africa, it's called Boko Haram. That's it. That's it. Boko Haram, the Africa branch. When you read the Quran, how anyone can call Islam is baffling to me. So there you are. OK, thank you, Richard, for that. Thank you. Did you, did you do anything else? I said, uh, no. OK. Sometimes I miss the comments and we have to go back a little bit. Uh, Daniel says, when I visit London and go home, I spend the next day blowing black snot out of my nose. Or oh, is there a video of that, please? Could you send that in? <laughs> that's, that's just one day. Can you imagine the damage it does to your lungs living there day in, day out? I mean, working in central London, uh, there's some wonderful buildings, beautiful, new, clean buildings, the shards and all that. And the buildings themselves on their own look lovely. But you come out and it's a dump. Dirty. And it doesn't matter how many times that dust cart goes round, does it? It's always going to be dirty and filthy and dusty. It will always be like that. Um, this one goes on. He goes on. We are a short... Uh, Lives in the Kingdom of Fife in Scotland. It's a much smaller and has far fewer, if any, world-renowned attractions. But we are a short train ride or drive from Edinburgh, a slightly younger and vastly more attractive city, which I think it is as well. It also has museums, theatres, restaurants, bars, some other stuff. And we are surrounded by Scotland, an in incredibly beautiful country. Living in Cooper means uh, my partner... Um, uh, and I have been able to get an affordable mortgage on a three-bedroom bungalow with a garden and garage, all the trimmings. In London, we'd be 10-plus years of saving away for these sorts of dizzy heights as two professionals in full-time employment. So they'd both be on a fairly, you know, a fairly lot of money if they're professionals. We'd be renting a small flat in Zone 4, paying out a minimum of £1,200 a month for a one-bedroom flat, not including bills. We'd be a proud owner of £150 per calendar month travel cards. The cost of renting in London is so offensive that the Daily Mail recently ran an article entitled Londoners revelling all the things they can't afford to do this weekend. The current mayor of London thinks rent prices of £2,800 per calendar month are actually quite affordable. What planet is he on? Now, I like Boris Johnson. But he just seems so out of touch. How can you say £2,800 actually qualify as, an, uh, uh, as uh, affordable? Now, Simon's just come up there and says, what's wrong with Dustman? Now, why did you say that, Simon? Bearing in mind you're about to fall into a trap. Why have you just said to me, what's wrong with Dustman? I shall await your reply. So this story goes on there. I think we might actually do this on, on the Periscope show, show in, a, in, a, in a few Periscopes. I'm going to save that. I'm, in fact, I'm going to print that out, the whole thing, because it's a really good article. Come on, Simon. Why did you just say to me, what's wrong with Dustman? Come on, I'm waiting. You're about to fall into a trap, my friend. Come on, hurry up. We haven't got all day. I'm running out of time. I'm waiting for your reply. OK, so we'll print that out and uh, do that on a periscope at some point. Now, I have tonight off. So, what am I going to do? Don't know. What am I going to do? My old man, the dustman. Nice to see you, Dino. I was hoping to be, uh, you know, I thought you might have invited me round last night on the way home, I was. For a cup of tea, dear. No invite. I mean, how long do I have to wait? That's it. Simon, are you not speaking now? Look, you see, he knows. He knows he's done wrong. The comment was, are you going, Wendy? Already? I've nearly finished. Please wait to the end of the show. <laughs> no, I, would, I, I wasn't moaning about dust carts. I said that dirty, smelly dust carts. I didn't moan about dust men at all. See, you've only heard what you want to hear, haven't you? You've only heard what you want to hear. Hang on a minute. I haven't lined up my little closing thing here. One second. Talk amongst yourself for a moment. Let me put that there. <laughs> See, there's so many people, like Simon, who, um, there you are, that's done, who hears only the bits of the conversation that they want to hear. So he thinks I've been running down Dustman. Incorrect, Simon. I'm not even going to tell you what I said now. I'm going to force you. 
force you to listen back to the entire replay of the show. Thank you very much. Anyway, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, on this lovely Saturday afternoon. I'm going to uh, get out there and uh, do some more, gar even more gardening, even more gardening. Now, if we get time tonight, if I get time tonight, I'll do a pop. We haven't done one on a Saturday before. I'll do a pop jury, okay? That will only be on Periscope. A pop jury tonight, possibly on Periscope. What time? Don't know, okay? Might happen, might not. Just depends if, if you know. Someone, some, some poor, desperate person might, might, um, <laughs> Rusty's never seen a nice smelling clean dust cart. <laughs> some poor, desperate soul might ring up, oh, hello, Chris, you're off tonight. Do you want to come out? And then again, it, it might not happen either. <laughs> yeah, look, Dino, Chris is taking me out to dinner. Uh, excuse me, I thought you was the man. <laughs> time to go thank you very much gang it's been an absolute pleasure uh, my email address if you want to pop an email in the post or oh, let me just check uh, I haven't left any messages I, I, I get very upset with myself if I don't read all your messages out there we go that's it lovely yes indeed uh, email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk send in an email I'll read it out on the next show okay chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and uh, also join me on Periscope download the app iPhone or um, Android look for Periscope download that free of charge add me username Chris Reardon UK have a lovely Saturday bye bye now <laughs>